Let's now look at uh, fractions as indices. So let's look at an example to start with. And what we'll go for is we'll go for x to the power of a half. What we'll do is I'll multiply that by x to the power of a half. Okay, so, so what I have here is I'm just going to use the multiplication law. And all we're going to do there is we're going to do x to the power of a half plus a half. Okay. So half plus a half is just equal to 1. So the answer to that would be just x. x to the power of 1 was just as equal to, to 1, x. Right then, so let's look at another fraction. Okay, so I'll go for x to the power of a half. And what we'll do is I'll multiply that by x to the power of a third. Okay. So what that would be is x to the power of a half, using the same law, plus a third. And then from there, I need to remember how to work with fractions. But I'm working with fractions up in indices, and I just need to make sure that my fraction work is good for this. Okay, so to work out this here, what I'll do is I'll multiply top and bottom over this side by the 3. So that's going to give me x to the power of 3 all over 6. And what I'll do is I'll multiply this side of the fraction, okay, the 1 and 3 by 2. So that should give me plus 2 over 6. When I gather that together, that gives me x to the power of 5 over 6. Okay, as my final answer. So I think it's clear already that uh, you need to make sure that your, your fraction work is good. Um, and that's one thing to, to polish up on before you're, you're looking at fractional indices. Okay, let's, let's look at another example. I'll give you another two examples and then we'll go on to linking the fractions with thirds. Okay, so another example, what we'll go for is 2x to the power of a third. And what we'll do is I'll multiply that by 4x. I'll reorder that first of all. So these are separate, so that's 2 times x to the power of a third. So I'll just write the 2 first. I'm going to write the 4 next. I'm then going to write the x to the power of a third. And I'll write just the x that's left there. Okay. When I'm multiplying um, the, the, the uh, indices, you know, multiplying with indices, I'm going to be adding them. So I've got a 1 that's sitting here. But if I'm, I'm going to be adding a third to 1, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that into 3 over 3. Okay, because that's just the same as 1. Right, so I'll multiply the two numbers out first that are at the, the front. So that's going to give me 8. And then I've got x to the power of a third plus 3 thirds. And finally, that should give me an answer of 8 to the power of x to the 4 thirds. And that there could be my final answer if I leave it like that. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so we'll go with uh, 3x to the power of a quarter. And we'll do a division this time, divided by 12x to the 3 quarters. Okay, so first thing that I could do there is to simplify just the numbers at the front down. So I've got 3 on the top, 12 on the bottom. Dividing the top and bottom by 3 would give me 1. Okay. I'll leave the index as it is. And that will give me 4 on the bottom. And that will be x to the power of 3 upon 4. What I'll next do is I'll use the division law. So what I've got here is I've got, uh, I've got 1x to the power of a quarter. And what I'll do is I'm going to, with the, the quarter, I'm going to take away the three quarters. And remember at the front, I've got one quarter that's sitting there, just like that there, okay? So that's one x to the one quarter, take away three quarters in the indices, and then that's all divided by four. What that should give me is one x to the power of minus two over four, and that's all over four. Then from there, I can simplify that down and that will just go to x to the power of minus a half. And that's all going to be over 4. Okay, So that could be my final answer. If I have to write it with a positive index, then what I would do is I would write it with the half or the minus half down to the bottom there. I don't leave, it's not nothing that's on the top. Remember, if I look back here, there was still a 1 sitting there. 
So I've got 1 on the top and I've got 4 x to the power of a half. And that's it written with a positive index and that's sometimes what we've been asked to do. OK, so that's a quick look at uh, fractions as indices. So just the normal rules of fractions apply, adding and subtracting them. Um, and you need to be good. You need to be good at that to make sure that your work in fractional indices is uh, up to speed. Let's look at uh, some numbers with uh, powers to them. So let's start with uh, looking at, I'll look at 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 1. So I know 2 to the power of 1 is just equal to 2. 2 to the power of 2 be equal to 4. 2 to the power of 3. 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8. 2 to the power of 4. So I've got 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2, which is 8 times 2 is 16. And say 2 to the power of 5, which should equal 32. OK. Now, if I work down the way a bit, if you remember back to one of the, the rules that we discussed in a previous clip, anything to the power of 0 is going to be equal to 1. OK. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Now, I'm going to move into some negative indices here. So remember what this is here, if I've got a negative 1 up at the top in the index, what that would mean is that would go to the bottom, to the denominator, and that would be 2 to the positive number 1, and that would just be equal to a half. So 2 to the minus 1 is equal to a half. 2 to the power of minus 2 would then just go the same way, same kind of process as I've followed here, it would be 1 all over, 2 to the power of 2, which would be a quarter. And then finally, I'll just do one more. 2 to the power of minus 3 will go to 1 over 2 to the power of 3. Finally, that would be 1 over 8. That would be an eighth. So that's working with some numbers uh, and indices to see how that works out. Now, the kind of link that we've got between indices and thirds, um, I'll give you some examples to show you how that would work out. Right, so let's start with 4 to the power of a half. Okay. So the way that that would work out if I change that into third form, and I would usually do that if I was trying to work out some answers, what I've got is I've got root sign. The 2 that's there will go over to here which is the 2. Normally we don't show that, and on your calculator that's not shown because that sign is a square root sign that we would normally use. I would normally have the 4 sitting there, and I'd have that 1 just sitting up here, there. OK? So to work that through, all I'm looking for is the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is just 2. If you're concerned about where the uh, the numbers go, with that 2, or whatever number's on the bottom of the fraction going there, and whatever number that's on the top of the fraction going up here as a power, you can just think of it as a flower. OK, so we've got a wee flower. This will be a, a horrendous wee drawing. There's my fabulous flower. Down there I've got the roots. So the root of the flower is at the bottom, so the root goes and the bottom of the fraction will go to the root sign. And remember, the, the sun, OK, powers the top of the flower. So the power is at the top. OK, pretty horrendous drawing, mind you. OK, one way of remembering it. If you remember it a better way, please do that. And please let me know. OK, so, so let's look at uh, another example. Let's go for 4 to the power of 2 over 2. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the root. This 2 here goes there, that other 2 goes there, and I've got 4 here. So what I'll do is I'll take the square root first of all, which will give me 2, and I've got it to the power of that 2 there. So that's the same one, so that just follows on. And 2 squared will give me an answer of 4. Okay. So I could always, you know, instead of doing that, what I could do is I could, uh, I could make that the square root of taking the power first would give me 16, 
and that would be the square root of 16, which would give me 4. But usually when we're working with, uh, with the numbers we've got, it's easier to take the root first to make the number smaller so that you can work with smaller numbers, and it makes it a lot easier. That's, that's my suggestion. Right, let's look at another. Let's go for 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, so in root form, the 2 is down here, the 3 is up there, we've got the 4 here. So take the square root of 4, which is 2, I've still to put it to the power of 3, and that would be 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. There's my answer there. Okay, so what if then I go for another one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 8 to the power of a third which is quite a common one that we would have to work out. Now what I'm going to do is with my root sign, if I think of a flower, the root is going to be the one at the bottom, which is a 3, the power is the one at the top, and I've got 8 in here. So if I think of the cube root of 8, and the way I have to think about that is what number times itself gives me 8. So I can start at 1, 1 times 1 times 1, nope, that gives me 1. I can then go to 2, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Yes, yeah, so my answer there is going to be 2. Let's look at another. Let's look at the number 32. And what we'll do with that, we'll put it to the power of 4 over 5. So that's quite a complicated one, I would think. Right, so instead of working it out from here, I would convert it into root form. The 5 is going to go to here. The 4 is going to go up there as a power. And the 32, the number, is going to go there. Right, so what I'm then thinking about is what number times itself, times itself, times itself, times itself, gives me 32. Starting with 1, no, nope. starting with 2, yeah, it's going to be 2 as well. And I've got that to the power of 4. And 2 to the power of 4 will give me 16. So 32 to the power of 4 upon 5 is equal to an answer of 16. So what I have here is one of the other rules that you need to remember. If I've got x and it's to the power of a divided by b as a fraction then what that's going to go to is going to go to a root sign the b at the bottom is going to go here as the root the a is going to go up here and the x the number usually is going to go there so that there is one of the rules that again you need to remember for indices so hopefully, hopefully I've helped you a bit with, uh, with indices and numbers and changing indices into roots. You can do the opposite by changing it from a root into an index form. So um, I hope you have good luck with your indices. And I hope now you can maths.